And you, we trying to, we're trying to justify our position by saying, well, what you do? If you would have seen me, or you would have heard me if you would. Come on here, somebody. The Bible saying he ran in a cave after victory. Let me tell you something. I told you last week, and y'all get this, I'm serious about it. Don't have a victim's mentality, but have a victor's mentality. We don't have to run and be afraid. We don't have to hide from him. Talk about the Savior. Come on here. Those people. Come on here, somebody. <clears throat> Let me move on for a second time. Is y'all getting in? All right. Let me just read a little bit more. They went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord. Now, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him. Now, look what the Lord said. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? Why are you in the cave, man? When I give you victory? Why are you hiding and running from a threat when you know I already delivered you? What you doing here? What you doing in the position you in now? Why are you here? You ever ask your own self that question? And many times you can answer that question yourself. You can, you can just reflect back and say, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't did this. Come on here. If I'd been a better steward, I wouldn't be in a position financially where I'm at if I had just used some, some, some good stewardship. Hmm? If I had left <laughs> if I had left that alone, left it in the store, uh-huh. Life bill would have been paid. Huh? If I didn't go to the barber shop and buy a suit of clothes, I, I could have had you know, I could have had the water bill paid. Come on here, somebody. Huh? Uh, if I had got my nails done this week, yes, I could have. Come on here. All right. All right. Huh? What are you doing here? Mm -hmm. and so now, he's on the run. Number one, I say if you have courage to live, you got to be willing to refuse. Yeah. If you want to be willing to move to the next level, you got to eat and be willing to receive what he has for you. Anybody want to move to the next level? Yes, Anybody realize that the journey is too great for you to do it by yourself? Amen. You got to have courage to accept what God is saying to you. Whenever God challenges us, church, we got to be willing to accept that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So, so, so. Now, I like verse 11 on through and I'm going to close it, okay? This is very important here. I want y'all to get this. Can I read? Yes, then he said, uh-huh. Go out, Elijah, get from out of that place where you don't fold the bed. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And watch this. This is what I like, y'all. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Ooh. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. I see that? And after the earthquake was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. But this way it was. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Oh my God. Most of time, Elijah learned a lesson that we need to learn. That God is not just a God of the spectacular. We're always looking for God to do mighty big great things. But God can, can come in a in an in a unusual way. Come on here, somebody. It's in the small things that God shows up in a big way. Not only that, Sister Stone, I want y'all to hear this because it's, this is a, Sister Katie is a sign of maturity. Got it? You got to have God test Elijah right here again. Oh, man, that's a, that's a study. God, God tests Elijah. He tests him in the spirit of discernment. He didn't speak to him through the earthquake. He didn't speak to him through the fire. He didn't speak to him through this situation. That's what 
He spoke in a small voice. Uh, he whispered to him. Can I get a witness here? 